Hello everyone, my name is Pixlriffs and welcome to Enshrouded. This is my first look at this game, it's probably just going to be a one-off where I upload the first hour of gameplay. And I figured I would check this out since it's a survival crafting game. Obviously people are familiar with this genre if you've seen games like Valheim or Ark Survival Evolved or anything like that. And before you click away because this isn't a Minecraft video, a couple of things. First of all, I decided to check this out because other games can be a really great way to get a feel for environment design and other building styles and fresh inspiration you can bring back to a game like Minecraft. And secondly, Jappa, who's the lead artist for the Minecraft team, said the building system in this game is one of the best he's come across in a game like this. So that recommendation alone made me think this was probably going to be worth checking out. A few of my friends have also decided to play this independently of my decision to check this one out, so I thought I would give it a go. It's just come out in early access on January 24th, and I think it has a couple more days on a bit of a promotional offer on the Steam store. So if that convinces you to check it out, then by all means, take a look. So we're going to start off by creating a character. I'm just going to do this part relatively quickly, give him a fresh haircut, and we'll get into what will probably just be the first hour or so of gameplay relatively unedited to give you guys an idea of what all is going on here. I've taken a look at some of the facial hair options beforehand and decided that this looks the closest to me, give or take how long his hair is. We've got a variety of different voices, and I think that one will do. And I'm just going to name him Pixorifs like I typically do, so there we go. That should take us in at level one. You can notice today's date because I'm playing this kind of late in the evening after I'm done with my Minecraft stuff for the day. And I did start a test world just to see how this went, but it seems like you can take your character between different worlds. We're going to start a completely fresh new one. We're going to call this one Pixelvania, which I'm fairly certain my Terraria world was called back in the day. And let's get into it, shall we? Long ago, Little intro a wanderer scene. brought an enthralling gift to the people of Embervale. Getting Elden Ring vibes from these, like, static the images. Elixir. Ooh. It was a cure. A blessing. A weapon. I'm gonna have 99 of those by the end of the game Once and not use any of them. Concealed by the ancients, its might had been set free. With it came power, mistrust, and a longing for more. I love these illustrations. They look so classy. Humanity dug the elixir wells, ripping apart the land and each other to quench their thirst. Okay, okay. Elixir and blood. A drop for a drop. Wow, they really tore the place apart over this stuff. Interesting. But from the depths of the wells, an unforeseen curse crept into Ember Oh no, they dug too greatly and too deep. The shroud, a ruinous Ooh. fog which sought only to spread and devour. I love the effects on that word, shroud. Facing their downfall, ancients and humans united to forge the flameborn. Now, your time has come. Awake. Pretty epic intro. Not too bad. I like it. I always notice in subtitles when they get things slightly wrong and the subtitles had humans and ancients the other way around to how they said it. So somebody submit that as a bug because I'm probably not going to. Is this me? Oh, it is me. I'm in a, a pod, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Full of arcane symbols. Kind of Breath of the Wild style intro, maybe. I don't know. How long have I been asleep? Who knows? I have done a little bit of key configuration as well when I tested out the game earlier. I rebound sprint to control because I'm used to that from Minecraft. Normally it is on shift and control was evade, but I've changed that to shift and it kind of makes sense, right? I'm, I'm shifting a little bit as I as I do my roll. This is the Cinder Vault and the first thing we got to do is run up to here and commune with the flame. And it seems to give you a little bonus of stamina on that wheel there, which is kind of Breath of the Wild style, I guess. We have slumbered for too long. The realm of Embervale has fallen. Now the enduring flame calls for you. Find a place in the ruined world and construct a flame altar to create shelter from the dark. Right you are. Flame altar is our first objective then. We've got a journal here on J and obviously a bunch of other stuff available in this menu, but this can tell us what our quests are. Claim a spot for a base. Embervale has fallen consumed by the shroud. Bring back the light and reclaim the land by establishing a flame altar in the wilds. A promising site to establish a flame altar is marked on your map. Reach the location to proceed. So I presume if I hit M, that's going to show me the map. That's on there. And you can set a waypoint. Okay, so the map navigation feels pretty slick so far. There is crafting, of course. All discovered recipes for this crafting station. So the flame altar I'm standing next to is also, I guess, a crafting station. 
And we need some stone for it. Okay, pretty standard. Yep, you can pin recipes to get a notification once you have enough. Okay, so if I hit F, that pins it. Okay, I will probably forget about that later, but might as well give it a try now. And I've got a timer for how long I have been rested. So maybe that's going to come into play a little later, but maybe that's what gives me the extra stamina. That's what I would hope, at least. So this says, A vast world awaits you filled with secrets and peril. Press I and navigate to the map to track your discoveries. Okay, so I is just what's going to bring up this inventory screen if we don't remember any of these. But I presume individually, yeah, there we go, they each do that. That's great. We can take a look at my character as well. So this is the equipment screen, obviously pretty standard. But we don't have any weapons or any armor or anything. It looks like there might be magic and some other stuff in here. What we do have is pants, which uh, apparently we can unequip them, but we've got some stylish leather boxes on underneath. Very good. I don't have anything in my backpack, understandable, and I have no skill whatsoever, I guess. Although, oh, there are different character classes. Athlete. <laughs> That's probably not me, although I have been working out lately. I will absolutely lose my cool if there is a monk style fighting class in this something you can use like bare fist weapons or something like that because i always play monks in D, &D and obviously bare fist steve in my minecraft dungeons playthrough is still kind of one of my favorite things i've done in a game that wasn't minecraft what is this oh we got lore do we have lore oh yes on the flame and its murmurs pure light engulfs the knowledge of the ancient breed protects it in a flaming core Wisdom far beyond my own imagination. I could stare into the fire for hours, seeking answers, a whisper, but I hear none. Despite possessing a voice, it only speaks to those born from the flame. A shame, as I believe we could have quite in we could have quite enlightened conversations. Balthazar. Well, that's a, a name that befits the voice, and uh, looks like Balthazar is dead. So we'll try and do better than him. This has like a little wisp of smoke coming off it, which makes me think I should jump off of that but i really probably shouldn't actually that seems like a bad idea let's go down the hill there's a path here and that's not going to kill me so that seems like a better option than this although okay am i supposed to be following this light that's kind of headed in this direction well there's a chest here so i'm clearly going to open that first aren't i a torch that counts as a melee weapon does it also count as light i would hope so okay we have comfort level one interesting cool okay uh where is my uh backpack yep okay good character and if i can equip this as a melee weapon or do i just have that now it was kind of not showing me okay so i have that in my oh okay so it's automatically lit that's good to know unless i just struck it like a match on some stuff and it seems like that will guide me through here although it seems to have durability as well so maybe i should not just be using that willy-nilly but i have another one okay great that's perfect <laughs> they clearly knew that i was going to need a second torch throughout all of this didn't they let's see which way okay it's lighting the lanterns around there which kind of means it's silly me holding a torch i kind of wish i could hold it up in the air though like if there was a right click option or something that i could use to hold it up to the cave around me and see a little bit better but clearly we can climb down some ladders i don't think i'm going to take full damage from jumping down these little areas is there going to be anything here I have to fight, though, is my next question. I can already hear some skittering, but I think those are just bats and whatnot. Can I get through here? Oh, I can. Aha, and I found a chest for my efforts. Another torch and another bandage. Well, I'm probably going to need the bandages at some stage, so that's good. Although, can I now go to my backpack and drop these in here? Okay, I have to click and hold to get those in there. Okay, that's good. Nice and intuitive. Easy to understand. I like it. I should be collecting stone, apparently, but I do not have a pickaxe yet. So evidently we have to go through here. And my my rested property is kind of running low at this stage. But what is this? The flame allows you to resist the shroud. But if you linger, you will perish. Oh, do I have to go through the, the creepy smoke? Escape the shroud to replenish your maximum time. Okay, so you basically have a timer once you're in there. Makes sense. And the flame from the altar is what allows me to resist the shroud i guess so can i get in here and see if there's anything behind this pallet okay apparently nothing all right well i should probably get out of the shroud <laughs> just because i spent some time messing around in there and then we're gonna run through here we're gonna sprint as much as i can tab to lock on oh there's a there's a thing here what are you well i get a back attack there we go all right okay all right this seems reasonable doable i can i can get a feel for this if I tab onto you, I got some backstab damage, but this one 
it looks like I am going to have to roll away from. And they dropped loot. What did I get? Uh, shroud spores. Okay, interesting. Materials. Good. I will try and be quick about collecting this because I'm on a, a time limit here. They probably wouldn't kill me in the first five minutes of the game, though, would they? Right, guys? Anyone? I wonder if these crates have anything as well. Looks like we are out of the shrouds, so I don't mind beating up the scenery a little bit. Oh, we can loot that. What does that have? A shield? Twigs? Oh, okay, I can... I can... Oh, and I can punch stuff. Well, and I did just get a critical hit from that, so I guess we're gathering wood and I'm earning the recipes for stuff like a shield. That makes sense. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, I got you. I got, I got the hang of it. Getting my martial arts training in on these fragile wooden objects. There we go. Okay, so now we're out into the fresh air. I can feel the wind in my face. Oh, and what are you, my friends? Oh, return beacon. Okay, so this is like the, uh, <laughs> this is the orb of safety. It's kind of like a checkpoint, I guess. Well, that makes sense. Now we've unlocked a construction hammer and we've almost reached our destination, but that was a longer trip than I expected. I'm very glad I didn't jump from up there, though. My goodness. What was I thinking jumping off there? Well, I was thinking that I wouldn't, so I didn't. Now, through here, we have the ruins of an encampment, and oh, this is what I like to see. Yeah, there's a training dummy that we can practice, and I reached level two by punching it, apparently, so that's kind of fun, although this seems like... Yeah, the uh, shield there is giving it a little extra block strength, maybe. Who knows? When equipped with a melee weapon, press right mouse button to block. Oh, okay. Can I block with the torch? No, okay. So the torch doesn't count as a good enough melee weapon, and it's certainly not a shield, is it? Right. But I do have a recipe for a shield now, so maybe I can make one of those? This looks like a Dark Souls bonfire. Is that a reference? <laughs> that feels like a reference to me. Anyway, what do we got around here? This looks like a little camp that maybe I can grab some stuff from. Yes, we have some string. So maybe that allows me to make a bow and a bedroll where I can sleep. Oh, and I can loot the uh, the jars and stuff in here as well. We've got some torn cloth. This looks like something I can read. Yes, okay, so the red stuff is lore, it looks like. New lore page, Ancients and the Flame. Captain's Journal, Day 1. Hold the chamber to your last breath. These were the words of the Ancient One before he entered with a handful of our best warriors. It was the first time I'd seen one of his kind, and I expect it will be the last. His face is burned in my mind. My life and those of my remaining soldiers are pledged to this sacred duty. Captain Arkwright. God, they're good at naming the characters, aren't they? This is awesome. All right. We can loot a couple of things around here. That is... Oh, a water skin. Very nice. Maybe we should drink some of that. And none of this armor looks especially usable, does it? Maybe I'll have to uh, craft some usable stuff myself. But it looks like some people did not have... A great time here. We have tar, and we're unlocking some building materials. So I'm really curious to get into the building in this game and see what exactly I can do. But frankly, I don't think I've got the skills for that quite yet. So we'll probably have to make our way through here. I'm grabbing a little bit of crafting material and building material just in case that comes in handy. But it doesn't look like I can use any of these weapons and whatnot. So probably a good thing that I'm just turning it all into firewood and sticks and whatnot at this stage. All right, what do we have around the back here? Nothing much to speak of. I guess I can come back through and loot this. I might even have better tools to do it so it won't take quite as long once I've made my way to the proposed flame altar site, which should be just down here. It was kind of out on the plains a little bit. Looks like there's a path nearby, though. So, yeah, it seems like we're effectively tasked with rebuilding some of this kingdom. Can I grab these mushrooms? Oh, I can. Very nice. For some reason, I keep thinking I need to hold down the button in order to... Ah, there we go. We got some stone just by picking up a rock. I keep thinking I need to hold down the button in order to confirm something, when really I can just walk up to it and tap E, and that's all I need to do, right? So we can make rough stone blocks now. Looks like nothing on the path is really... Ah, okay, we can get the berries. Very arc survival of us. Can't pick the flowers, though. Probably not yet. And it looks like there might be another couple of pieces of stone, but this is the location where we should build our flame altar. And the red glow is sort of over here. So this is obviously the location where it's suggesting that we build it. Okay, well that we can open our journal. We can claim a spot for our base. So we go to crafting. We choose to craft a flame altar. We hit space to craft it. And that should now appear in my inventory. Lovely it does. Okay, great. So that's going to be placed with the left mouse button and we can commune with the flame like we did 
in the temple back there. We are not alone. There are other survivors drowsing in nearby ancient vaults. Find them so they may aid in your journey. Go gently. One beckons nearby, just outside of the shroud's grasp. Interesting. So, first of all, our building area is a 40 by 40 cube, effectively. So 40 by 40 by 40. Very nice. We can extinguish the flame if we want to, I guess, move the base around. And upgrading the altar is possible, but requires a shroud core, which, from what I saw, I think you can get it from beating bosses. So that's a way of upgrading the area in which you can build. So you've got to choose this stuff fairly carefully, but then... If the area extends to that village, maybe we can kind of completely remodel that later. Obviously, while we're around here, we can get that rested buff back, so that's a good thing. I don't know what the berries do, but it seems like I don't have, like, a hunger bar or anything. We have a stamina wheel and a couple of bars, which I presume are health and maybe, like, mana, if that's used to cast spells of any kind. But I'm curious what else we can craft at this stage. So let's reopen that crafting menu. C is crouch, by the way, just in case we need that later. Um, let's take a look at the crafting on V. We can make a workbench once we have more string and more logs. So we've got a bit of that, but we need more. We can make a construction hammer because all we need is stone for that. And the bandages are cloth and string. Yep, okay. We have enough logs for a campfire. Can give you many bonuses. It's a great spot to take a rest and relax. We can make a shield now already. And then a club, which will probably be better to fight with than the torch. And that's just going to need some wood, but it needs more wood than we have to make both. So I should probably just go around getting some more wood, right? I wonder what my abilities are with regards to punching trees. Probably not all that good at it yet, but let's find out. Okay, yep. Still punching. This is taking longer than it would take Steve, let me tell you. So I reckon we're probably better off punching crates and stuff. It seems like we're doing damage, but I don't know if this tree is just going to be too sturdy for me right now. Maybe we'll pick a different sapling or something later on. But for now, there are hay carts, there are barrels. There are a few things that I can probably smash if I can... You can't really target the objects, so I need to uh, maybe stand back a little bit. Can I do like a jump and hit? Well, I kind of can. It doesn't really do much in the way of actual like damage, though. But there we go. I found the strats. Stand in the cart. Nice. Okay, and that gets us three more logs. So a few more of those, and we should be able to craft something a little bit more. Oh, I just punched that tree out of existence. <laughs> that was fun. Um, so this blue miasma over here is the shroud, so we shouldn't go in there if we value our lives. But then there's a couple of crates here that we can turn into more firewood, and oh, a little bit of string. Okay, so that means we should be able to craft some stuff like that workbench fairly soon. And there goes the string that we needed. Great. So it seems like everything around here is fair game. I can just punch whatever I find on the road and nobody's going to really get mad at me for it. I should have enough logs now to do some stuff. Let's go back over here and let's look at crafting. So the workbench needs one more string. And we can do an axe now. So that's going to help us chop down the wood. Yes, perfect. Uh, I think maybe I'll prioritize that. I've got enough twigs and some stone and some string. That seems like a good investment to me. So let's go and chop down. Let's start small. Let's start with this tree over here, which seems like a, a mere sapling compared to some of the other ones around here. Let's give this one a couple of sturdy chops. Need to be a little bit closer than that. Yeah, that's the kind of damage we want to be doing to a tree. And yeah, there was no way I was punching that tree down before, right? There we go. Six logs, some twigs. Perfect. Okay, that's seeming a lot better to me. I presume it's a bad idea to use the axe on stone. There's a goat. Can we target the goat? I immediately rolled behind the rock as defense. <laughs> uh, looks like we... Yep, yeah, we can target the goat. I sort of don't want to fight him right now. Also, is that a bee's nest in the tree? I'm probably going to leave that alone as well. I really don't want to get attacked by, like, wasps or something. That is not how I feel like spending my time today. So, going back to the crafting, let's take a quick look here. We still need more string, but we have tons of logs now, which is great. Do we do anything about... Uh, maybe if we get a workbench, we can make a storage chest or something like that. So maybe once we can do stuff like that, we'll be able to get into building. So where am I going to get the string from? There was string around some of the fences, so maybe I chop down a few more of those. And I expect this axe will do a decent amount of damage to them, but is it really necessary to use the durability on my axe? Probably not. Not when I can just strike them with my mighty fists and claim some of the twigs that was used to make them in the first place. Looks like we're not really getting any string from this, though. So I wonder if there's a more reliable source of string that I will get later. The local equivalent of a spider, maybe. Who can say? Now, it looks like we're not really getting a lot from this. Did I see something there? 
Okay, we got some more logs that were hiding in the grass, trying to escape my attention. And I wonder if there's anything else string-wise that can be found in the nearby ruins. So naturally this game is going to have some sort of day-night cycle and something from over there just fired. Or, the, or maybe that was the little light that's been lighting the lanterns on the way. It just kind of freaked me out then. It looked like something had flung past me like an arrow or something. Oh, there we go. That took down the, uh, the cart in a matter of a couple of swings. Is this going to provide any string for me? These look like kind of bales of cloth of some kind. Okay, makes sense that they are just going to give me cloth, but not the string that they were attached to. All I want is some string, lads. All I want to do is make a, a workbench or whatever it was. But we will see what else we can grab from the ruins of Longkeep, it said it was. We do have to travel through the shroud. That is our next objective, to find a sleeping survivor. And we have to venture through the shroud. But they are marked on the map, so maybe if we're headed in that direction... Maybe we should go and do that. Oh, are they all the way up there? Mmm, okay. Well, maybe I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time setting up here first, but maybe that can be an objective that we set ourselves to a little bit later. we got some plant fibers here. Can they be crafted into string, maybe? That is my hope, at least, because... Okay, I can just pick these up. I'm not <laughs> just trying to, trying to punch stuff here. This seems like, yeah, a little bit of old brewing equipment or something. And what does this say? Interact with campfires to cook food or sit near them to become rested. Ah, okay, right. So we can sit here and that will regain our stamina. We don't have any food that we can really cook. Unless we want to cook these mushrooms, maybe? Interesting. Oh, you can put them on a skewer. Oh, yes. Mushroom kebabs for me. Excellent. And now it's grilled and I just rolled directly into the fire. Oh, okay. They, they left some food around here. Okay, that was smart of them for people like me who decide they don't have anything that's worth cooking. All right, now we are rested, we are comfortable, and for whatever reason, I did not cook that. Stop rolling into the fire, you fool. I've just taken some damage <laughs> from my inability to control this game. Well, at least I have some water to put myself out again. And another lore text. Finally, a break from the tedious work. My bones are sore, but the warmth of a fire, a little shelter, and some sleep should allow me to become well-rested. Food is getting scarce. I hear they're planning an expedition. Thankfully, I hid some rations below my bed. They'll make for a nice meal when cooked over fire. So... There's some rations underneath here. Can I crouch down and see them? Are they hiding there or are they... Ah, I see. I found their secret stash of rations. Very nice. And that's grilled already, so I should be able to eat that. It doesn't look like the food spoils or anything. This is kind of a beautiful game when you when you step back and take a look at it for a second. Like, oh, oh, and then it got dark really suddenly. Okay, so now I feel a little bit more exposed, but thankfully I have a torch, so I'm going to at least fend off anything that comes out in the night and I've got an axe in case the things that come out in the night decide to attack me and they want to eat my flesh. There we go. What do we have here? Bandages. Excellent. Does anybody have any string in this town? Okay, now we're in the shroud. All right, so I probably want to stay out of that unless there is specifically a way to get string there. Let's take a quick look around the more lit up areas here. And it seems like the shroud is staying away from this lit up path, but then as soon as I venture beyond that, that is where the nastiness takes over. Okay. Well, I will run around here a little bit longer, see if I can find what I'm looking for supplies-wise. And water is a place we can scoop water and restore our vitality. Oh, wow. Okay, it's just going to do that until I tell it not to. Fine. Fair enough. We are on the road and we are cold. Okay, being on the road seems to give us some kind of buff. But being cold is presumably a debuff. And I don't know... Oh, okay, there is something there pacing around at the edge of my camp. Maybe I should try and attack this thing with an axe. See how well you do, buddy. Oh, that's effective, apparently. But that thing is heftier than anything else that I have fought so far. Okay, and if I hold the mouse button, it deals an extra, like, swing at the end of that. Nice. And that kind of stuns the shield. Nice. And the killing blow, the death blow. Did you have any string? No, you have more spores. I still don't know what I'm supposed to do with those. So no string yet. Maybe we can take out some more of these fences. And maybe... Does knocking them down with an axe give me better... More quality crafting materials? Or am I just destroying vital infrastructure around my own little abode here? Difficult to say. But it seems like they're staying away from the flame, at least. So they won't enter my building area, which is kind of nice. 
And I can stay here to feel sheltered and warm and not really do much else with it right now. So let me take a quick look at my crafting stuff and see... I can make string from plant fibers. Excellent. I knew there would be something like that. So, good. Now I can make a workbench. I want to do this just for the Minecraft instinct of it all, just to see what having a workbench will get me. And I guess we will craft it here, but then we can rotate it by hitting R, and you can use the scroll wheel to rotate it little by little. That's nice. And then X says use snapping, so it can kind of snap to a grid of sorts around here, although annoyingly it's not going to snap to the center of this, so I presume we can just leave this offset somewhere. And now we have the ability to craft and repair, so this will allow us to make blocks of generic building material, and we have enough logs to do this, so I guess we should give that a go. And then storage is in here as well, but that requires more string, of course, and more twigs. But then the tiny chest seems like it'd be a worthy goal to have a little bit later. So let's craft a few of these. We have a hundred Rough wood blocks. And all that needs is two wood logs each. Really? 100 blocks? Okay, I wonder what I can do with that beyond this. So are those in my backpack now, or are they just in like a... Okay, they're in an action bar, which I can... Oh, you press, press Alt to switch between them. And then you get... Okay, interesting. You get like a little... Block by block. This is quite small. Like, I was expecting the scale of these blocks to be larger. But that's kind of nice, actually. Let's make a little little box around the altar for now. I feel like decorating this a little bit. I probably already decorated it asymmetrically, but that's fine. Hmm, curious. Okay, I'm getting to grips with this slowly but surely, but it's kind of got its own idea of where the block grid is for the moment. Or maybe I'm just, like, just learning still. Just learning a little bit. But I like that. Can I click and drag with this? No, not really. Or maybe I can later, but it looks like I can't... And I can just remove it with right click. Okay, that makes sense. That's fun. I wonder if how how long is it going to take me to make a house like this? If I if I craft these wooden blocks into something else, is that going to make a bit more sense? So like manual crafting, I can't make anything into like okay, you can make roof blocks, and those are made out of shingles or plant fiber. So we need logs. We need more tar. Okay. There's a glider that I could make, but it says level 5. Does that mean I have to be level 5 in order to use it? Probably. And then the grappling hook. I need more metal and, I guess, shroud spores. So now I know what I use those for. And those are for, like, more advanced crafting and, like, progression stuff, I guess. So you do need to go into the shroud in order to make progress, in order to gather those resources and get some more interesting stuff later. Well, that is good to know. I guess we also have a campfire as well if we want to craft any of that stuff. And I think it's probably about time I made a club just so I don't have to rely on the axe for everything. Let's sort out my inventory, shall we? Because this is clearly a bit of a mess right now. Let's swap this into this spot here. Let's put the axe next to it. We'll put the torch on the end here. Obviously, I want to keep some food and water on me, but I'm not certain I will need stuff like these mushrooms, the raw meat and stuff like that. I think maybe we can put that in the backpack for now and then I'll deal with that a little bit later. Bandages seem like they'd also be good because they're healing items so we'll keep those around probably next to the food here next to the food and water and then I won't worry too much about the blocks but I do wonder how much you can use blocks to defend yourself probably not much if you can't really use them outside of your building area. Anyway let's hold the torch so we get a bit more light as we travel through this town and I guess we are going to have to go through the shroud and out the other side in search of whoever this stranger is who's going to help us fix up our town. I should probably also use a bandage at some stage to heal the damage I took from rolling into the fire like an idiot, but maybe we'll do that a little later. For now, I am comfortable enough, I think, running on through here. And it seems like the mist doesn't really occupy much in this direction, or it was not quite as shrouded as I initially thought. Let me quickly observe the map see where I'm headed, and I should be heading out this way, so let's set a waypoint for that. But we're heading down towards this ominous-looking blue mist down here, and I wonder if that's gonna take us in any specific direction. This looks interesting. This looks like a clear kind of archway or bridge. Oh yeah, it's a bridge of some kind, and there are things for me to hide behind, but I'm not certain if I can get across. Okay, so we need to take a path through the shroud or get a grappling hook. Makes sense. We know what we need for a grappling hook, but I don't have any metal yet, nor any way of acquiring it that I'm aware of. 
And I don't have any means to mine stone or anything, like no pickaxe or anything yet. So I'm curious if any of these huts or whatnot are going to give me a crafting recipe. I could also sleep, I guess. I can sleep through the night, although I'm not particularly warm. I am comfortable, and that is progressing the daytime, it looks like. How do I get up again? Okay, I just move. Nice. And now everything is bright red. <laughs> red sky in the morning. Crafters take warning. Captain's Journal, day six. The raiders have besieged us these past two days, attacking from the bridge. Their eyes. Such madness. But we have withheld so far, but only just. We may not survive the next assault. I've been ordered to rig... I, I've ordered to rig the pass with our last munitions. If those scavengers return, we are prepared. So there are munitions, meaning there are, like, bombs and stuff I, I expect we can use. And there's a little chest here. That's going to give us... all arrows. Okay, so those weren't their last munitions. Those were just arrows. But I guess I can rig up a bow once I have enough string. Once again, the need for string is becoming very apparent so far. Looks like we do have to go through the shroud, though. That's going to be risky of course, but the risk should pay off. And before we do, there is some stuff here for us to gather. First of all, torches. It's going to give us loads of torches so that we can keep those up. We are hungry. We had to destroy the bridge and with it our connection to the supplies. But it worked. We haven't seen any more scavengers. The cinder vault and those within it are safe and should remain so. That's where we woke up, the cinder vault. If we are to avoid starvation, we may have to take our chances in the horrible shroud. Either choice is certain death. Well, RIP Captain Arkwright then. Unless he shows up a bit later. Unless he's the guy we're trying to find, maybe. Did it say anything about who this person was? What their name is or anything? A survivor of the Shroud. Okay. And we can rouse them with our inner fire. I'm not sure what this... Oh, okay. So it's more about the survivor. Interesting. Cool. Okay. Well, let's take a dip into the Shroud then, I suppose. And I like the art style changing immediately to these kind of more fungal growths and this very alien feeling landscape. Makes the mushrooms on the outside feel positively pedestrian, doesn't it? Well, we are enshrouded now and it says stay on the path lest the shrouds kin take you. Salvation lies straight ahead. So I guess we are staying on the path for as long as we can and being on the road does seem to give us a little buff. So hopefully we can take on these moaning zombies with our new club. Seems like we've stunned this one as well. Excellent. Good. All right. Let's search that. Grab what we can. We have a ring. That looks like something we can equip, but I also want to get out of the shroud before I look at my equipment, so let's not worry too much about that yet. Let's run for this. This might be the exit, or it might just simply be a way up towards the next little area. Yeah, there's a mine to go on through. Okay, okay. Looks like we're okay in here for now. I'm not seeing too many other enemies. I'm tapping tab occasionally just in case I can catch sight of them in the mist. Oh, this looks climbable to me. This looks like a climbable surface. Yeah, that's right, gamers. We know what's up. And now we are out of the shroud once again and out on the other side where it looks like another ruin is. And a nicer looking one as well. I like the stone brick vibe. Bit of mossy stone bricks. I'm a Minecraft guy. I know what mossy stone bricks look like. We just got some fireflies from inside of here. Obviously resting during the day. But we managed to get through that without taking any damage, so I'm quite proud of myself. And you? Oh, what are you? Are you a... Okay, you're a hostile. Okay, fair enough. Well, you've got a ranged weapon that did a ton of damage to me, so I'm going to have to take you out as quickly as possible and then bandage the heck out of myself. What was that? Can I use that? Metal scraps. Okay, so we have scraps now. Maybe we can make a grappling hook with that. And they have... Elixir, which is the thing that supposedly has caused this entire conflict to begin with. But maybe we should be uh, reserving that in case we need it for, like, boss fights or something like that. Like I said, I'm the kind of person when it comes to, like... Oh, is this more metal scrap? Can I use this? I'm the kind of person when it comes to any kind of RPG or whatever, I always end with, like, 99 potions and all of the elixirs and whatnot. So those are obviously bear traps. I should not tread on those. That makes a great deal of sense. And is there anything up here that I can grab? Be on the lookout for those places. You can swing using a grappling hook. Okay, and this has a couple more climbable surfaces. Maybe there's a little bit of loot down here that we can snag, but it doesn't look like there's too much going on here. How far can I jump? I can make this, obviously, even though that was a really awkward angle to do it. And there we go. That's what we're about. Health potions. Very nice. It's not quite the elixir, but it is. It is going to do for now. 
And can I make the jump across there is my question. I am a little bit scared to do that, but I don't think I'll be able to make it back. What is this? This looks like some machinery I should be able to use. But maybe I can I can loot it. Oh, I looted a person. I, I, I looted a person and I got a recipe for a wand? Hello? What do you have? More scraps and... Oh, grenades. Nice. Explosive powder balls. And another arrow. Nice. Okie doke. Very good. Very good. Was worth coming here for a little bit of looting. Slightly scared about how I'm going to get back, but we'll deal with that a little later. And they did say they were storing all of their munitions on the bridge, so I guess it was going to make sense for me to come here in the first place. We got some more plant fiber at least, so maybe we can make a bit more string later. And maybe we can gather plant fibers from the area around my camp, and perhaps like crops and farming are going to play a role in this a little later. I really don't know enough about the systems involved here. Like, I'm just launching into this with absolutely no knowledge, which is often more fun, I think, just to test out the tutorial system and see whether or not it's going to give you enough directions to get you through the game. Now, let's see. I think we'll probably just chance being able to jump over here, and nope, it's just going to drop me down there. Can I drop down into the shroud from there? Oh, no, I can make the jump. Okay, I'm pretty athletic, it turns out. Didn't even to need to level up on the skill tree for that. Speaking of which, by the way, did leveling up get me any skill points that I could spend at all? Okay, I need a couple more, it looks like. But I can earn a couple of these smaller ones. Pickaxe. Once we have one, we could deal more damage. I need three instead of six seconds to revive an ally. Yeah, so there is multiplayer. I'm playing the single player for now, but... Chances are, if I'm into this game and a few of my friends are playing it, I might be able to hang out and do some multiplayer, maybe on Twitch somewhere, but probably not here in the videos because I know you folks are into your Minecraft, really, and so am I, to be honest. Let's see if we can grab anything else from these pots and pans and stuff that are hanging around here. Not really, just a couple of objects to break. Fair enough. And there might be some metal scraps and stuff that we could grab if we take down some of these heftier looking barricades, but I expect the majority of this is still just going to give us wood. Fair enough. Looks like I'm fully healed though, so at least the bandages are doing what they say they did on the tin. And I guess on the road we probably need to be headed in this direction if we are to find our survivor. Oh, and it looks like they're inside of here. This looks like a grim and foreboding place, doesn't it? Or maybe it's just come under the shroud's influence and been burned by... Uh, Oh, bushes can conceal you. Okay, so we can crouch inside of these, sneak up on enemies. Not that I'm seeing any enemies, but wait, who is this? Aha. Now we can do some sneaking with a club and everything. Here you go, buddy. You didn't see me coming. There you go. Oh, this guy has some really cool looking weapons. What are those? Ah, okay. Yikes. Whatever they are, they killed me pretty fast. Okay, great. Uh, let's respawn. Yeah, okay, I have to hold E. Fair enough. Okay, so some of my items got dropped over there, it seems like, but we know how to get there now, and we can make our way back there pretty quickly. So that's all right. What did I lose? I can't really tell, but I need to bandage myself up because I didn't regain all of my health by respawning here. Okay, <laughs> now we know what we're up against, though, folks. Now we have an understanding of what the true dangers are, and I need to pay attention to that stamina wheel because it could tell me whether I could evade and when evading was not an option. I wonder if there's anything else I can do to get myself some protection at this stage, but frankly, unless I can craft some more armor. Let's see, let's take a look at crafting. And I can't really make anything, even rags, uh, beyond me at this point. Although that may be because I've lost some stuff from my backpack. I think that's the stuff that we craft. I can take a look at that ring, though. Hello? Backpack extension is a thing. Ring here. Sigil ring of the Elder Guard. More stamina, more health. Okay, maybe I should have equipped that before I decided to fight that guy but it seems like it does top that up for me that I'm not I'm not need, gonna need to uh, not gonna need to bandage myself anymore to make up the last of that health that seems good okay so let's make our way back through the shroud there's a waypoint on the map where we died so that's good to know and if I am careful here I should be able to make my way through here without taking any damage on the way back to that guy and hopefully they have not regained the health in the same way that I have. I guess we'll find out, right? The scale of this is not something I have yet appreciated. See those mountains over there in the distance? I bet you can go there. I bet this is the kind of game where you can go to any terrain that you see. And so I am hopeful that we can go to a biome like that eventually, but 
That is something that remains to be seen. Oh, we can search this for a little bit of extra material. I'll take that. I'll take that. Absolutely. But it doesn't look like the enemy here has respawned. And since the other stuff has not yet respawned, I am hopeful that that enemy will not have regained too much health and I'll be able to sneak up and deal a bit of damage. He saw me come in the first time. He won't see me come in the second time. Or maybe he will. I can't really tell what the situation is up here. It looks like he's gone back to digging in the coffin over there. Although that looks like kind of the, uh, the pod that I spawned from to begin with. So maybe there are other of these flame-born people. What is this going to tell me? I can retrieve... Oh, okay, this is all my items. Okay, I'm taking everything. Thank you. Nice. Okay, that's my backpack filled back up, so I feel better about having died to this guy. And yeah, okay, his health has just completely regenerated. That's fine. We can backstab him. And this time I'll be slightly better about evading. That's right, that's right. I've played some Elden Ring. I know what's up. Come at me, bro. Okay, he's got a th three or four hit combo and then, yep, does an absolute ton of damage. But that's fine. I can bandage myself a little bit and get in a couple of swings before we dodge roll out of the way. You will feel my combo, sir. Yes. Okay, and that guy just dies on the floor. He doesn't dissolve the way the enemies from the shroud do. So that is interesting. Now, if I eat this meat... Okay, that doesn't necessarily get me health back, but it increases my maximum health. So can I make some more bandages is my first question because I really need them. Okay, good. We can. We need to use the string for that, but of course we have the ability, if not the resources, to make some more string. So that is good. I will definitely apply this bandage. Thank you. But if that means I get a little bit of extra healing, I can heal past my maximum health threshold thanks to having eaten that grilled food. That is great. That is wonderful to know. Now, were they looting anything interesting from inside of here, or were they just idling? They were just idling over here, it seems like. Well, there's something over here that we can read. Let's take a quick look at this. The cinder vessel broke down during testing. The rat I used inside was charred by the coalescent flame. So they're testing these on animals, or am I grown from a rat in a lab? I can't really tell. Another rat, Igni. Hopefully our path to salvation. I cannot accept more setbacks. I will ensure that the cinder vessel holds as if my life depended on it, it may well. Oh, that's Balthazar again. I wasn't doing the voice. I'm sorry. All right, let's take a look at what else is around here. I'm hoping that there is more string, because I'd like to make more bandages and get my health up to its true maximum at the moment. And I wonder if there's anything up here on this floor above. There are more books and another chest with some more grenades. Maybe I should have used those on that guy who absolutely kicked my butt earlier. And another one. Ah, Eureka! By the ancients, I've done it! Equilibrium. The subject sleeps, yet can be awakened. They are dead, yet alive! The subject does not decay, is untouched by the coarse flow of time. A flame soul in a mortal body. Igni serves as proof. We can survive, we can endure. These cinder vessels will be our only chance amid the shroud. We have no other choice. Balthazar. Well, thanks, Balthazar, for the, uh, the lore dump there. But yeah, it seems like... They have maybe tested these on rats to begin with. <laughs> and then maybe I'm not grown in a in a, in a vat. Maybe I'm, I'm not a vat rat. It turns out the vat rat here actually... Oh, hello? Is is there is there an enemy? Has an enemy spotted me? Did I tread... Oh, no, I tread on a bee's nest. Ah, help! <laughs> oh, and now I've awakened the attention of this guy who looks like he has the same type of weapons as that other guy did. So maybe I should have... Oh, God, no, no. Can the bees attack him? Can he be attacked by the bees? <laughs> Please? Okay, the bees may have left me alone, but this guy is now going to absolutely take me to the cleaners. If I don't get better at dodging, hello. All right, maybe the elixir. Maybe it's time. It wasn't time. Friends, it was not time. He does get attacked by the bees. I should have just let the bees kill him. The bees were way better at killing him than I was. Okay. Okay. All right, lesson number two. Let the bees do the do your bidding. <laughs> Let the bees take everything out. They're clearly more effective in battle than I am. You know the other thing? I had some healing potions, didn't I? Where have those gone? They're right here. Okay, let's move those onto there. And let's drag the bombs onto there. I'm going to drink one of these. And that's gotten the majority of my health back. Although I do need to uh, cook some more food if I want the maximum health increase. And I don't know what the elixir actually did before I drank it. So that's another lesson we've learned, folks, is make sure to read the label on these things before you just down them, apropos of nothing in particular. 
But it seems to be a debuff of some kind. But is it going to tell me what it does? Buffs one, debuffs one. Status details. Okay. Elixir takes its toll. Time in the shroud is reduced by one minute. Then why do I have this in the first place? What did it do? And the water gives me endurance and stamina recharge. But I don't know what the elixir was really for or why I was supposed to have drunk it. So that's confusing the heck out of me. I should have read that a little bit more thoroughly. Once more into the shroud, dear friends, once more. But we are going to beeline for that area and probably throw a grenade at the first guy I see. I will see how effective that is and whether or not we have any other weapons that we can take advantage of. There's probably some cool stuff in the shroud, but since I have a one minute reduction in the amount of time I can stay here, I'm not going to stay here for long. I'm going to keep running. I also don't think I dipped into this. Let's cook some food real fast to see if we can get that uh, that health buff back. Do I have any food on me here? I can open my backpack now so we can at least get that on the bar. Hold that to cook it. We can cook it on a skewer. There we go. So now we have some grilled meat. I now know not to roll into the fire. And if I drag this back out of my hotbar there, we can... Wolf that down. There we go. Okay, let's read this. Cade Hawthorne, new character. Spectacular progress is being made. To all who set their eyes upon my wondrous... No, allow me to begin again. To all travellers, I have conquered this terrain with my greatness. I'm afraid that's not right either. The bridge is nearly finished and I cannot find the words to express my joy, confound it. How lucky we had a bountiful mine so close by for materials and ore. One thing I do know, I'll name this bridge... Braylin, after my dearly departed fifth aunt. Though if she was still alive, I'm not sure she would be flattered, for her and the bridge share not just the name, but a brash nature. Signed, Cade Hawthorne. Well, thanks, Cade. Once again, a uh, curious little lore dump that I'm sure is going to make more sense once we know a bit more about these characters. But it seems like Balthazar has a lot to do with the uh, the Cinder Shrine, or the, the sort of area that we originally spawned in. And perhaps the technology or the mysticism or whatever it is that has kept us alive thus far. And allowed us to respawn here, maybe. Right, well, there's my little totem that I can retrieve. So I can take all of my stuff back. And hopefully won't have lost anything in the process. Now, where's that guy? I've got a grenade with his name on it. Maybe need to crouch and be a little bit more stealthy as I approach. Although that seems to mostly count in these bushes here and there. The guy was over here, but I'm curious if he spotted me from further in. I'm not seeing anything when I hit tab. I guess he was killed by the bees. Did that count? Did the bees do away with him while I was still respawning? I guess so, right? So maybe we're in the clear. Yeah, I guess that's good. That's good. I'll take it. I'll also take whatever I can from these carts in case they've got anything useful. I think the metal scraps are going to come in very useful. It seems like there's a lot we can make with those, including, like, grappling hooks and stuff. But it seems like maybe I can't make that until I'm back at my work table. Because I didn't see it in the crafting recipes here. I can make a wand once I have more bones, and that does, I guess, ice damage? Or a staff? Rudimentary but effective staffs can cast spells by using spell charges and mana. Okay, interesting. We can craft torches, lockpicks. Yep, okay, that makes sense. We've got enough for the lockpick now. And is there anything else around here or do I just need to go deeper in? I guess those two guys guarding the place were the major obstacle to completing this quest. Although I don't much like the look of what's in here. That looks like an explosive barrel to me. Probably to go with the explosive materials that I just picked up elsewhere. And this looks like a pretty hefty weapon that I would not want chucked at me. Is there another ladder up here? There is. Okay, so I, I went up this one. Is there one on the other side as well? Can I get to maybe some other scaffolds up here? Or is this not going to be the same thing? Doesn't look like I can see a ladder around this. So anyway, without further ado, let's head on in. And see if there's anything else that's going to attack us. Because if so, I have grenades now. You better watch out. <laughs> I am Santa Claus with grenades. Okay, this is an ancient vault of a blacksmith. And there is one guy over there who looks like he's interested in my grenades. Oh yeah! <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. That was what I should have done the entire time. Sound off in the comments about what a fool I am for not having chucked grenades at them instantly. But this, this looks like fun. Although to be fair, 
it seems to only do the same amount of damage as my club does. Is it better made, though? Is that what we're dealing with here? Because this says 250 max durability, that's 120. Okay, and it's doing blunt damage as opposed to cutting and piercing damage. And I don't like the sounds that are coming from inside of here. This all feels a little bit too ominous for my liking. But you know what? If there is a survivor in here, they are probably in one of these pods, yeah? Are they the rat? Is it going to be a rat blacksmith? Here we go, Balthazar. It's done. The cinder vessel is a delicate contraption, still volatile, yet brimming with potential and hope. The first human to enter will be our true prototype, the kindling of a new spark. Thankfully, the blacksmith volunteered. He must enter the vessel and sleep until roused anew, lest he slips into eternity. May the ashes of one age sustain the seeds of the next. Balthazar. Well, I guess the blacksmith is in here and he's not a rat. It said he was a human. <laughs> so I can't call him rat lad for the rest of this. And I love the stuff they got in here. <laughs> These bronze vessels and curious contraptions. But it's time, I think, to awaken our blacksmith and see what the blacksmith is going to do for us. Oswald Anders, the blacksmith. I wonder if that's the name everybody gets or if that's uh, just like a, a, a placeholder kind of thing, like a, uh, a generated one. But it seems like he's not actually in here. So is he just going to be summoned if we do something? When we need to rest, we can fast travel back to home by traveling using the map. Okay. So does that mean the blacksmith is just going to be back at my base? I presume so. And it seems like... Oh, bridge construction. All right. So we got some interesting stuff we can do a bit later. But the home, if we fast travel there... Nice. That is good. That is good to know. We can fast travel between these points if we set them up around the map. And it may be that we, if we can craft another flame altar, because I've still got the recipe pinned. I should probably have unpinned that a while ago. Once again, probably driving people mad slightly. But we have... We can place them in the home with a summoning staff. Oh, okay, right. Um, but yeah, if we get this crafting thing, we can go to the flame altar. We can unpin that, and that's no longer just going to be hanging out on my screen forever. That makes sense. Right, so if we commune with the flame, this survival will be a worthy condition to our a worthy addition to our cause. Place them into the world with a summoning staff, which you can craft from simple twigs. Oh, how wonderful. We get simple twigs and we can bring this blacksmith here. That rules. All right. Well, we should be able to do that. I'm sure I have enough twigs. Yeah, I do. I only need one. I have four. Great. So, select a survivor while this item is in use with tab. All right. And I guess it'll be on my alt hotbar there. There we go. Summoning staff. Ready. Oswald Anders. He looks like a sturdy chap. Let's go. Let's bring Oswald here. And we can choose where to put him even. That's great. <laughs> Let's put him here by the crafting table. I expect he'll be doing a fair bit of crafting. Hey! What's up? At long last, I return. I'm a humble blacksmith at your service. Let's prepare you for what's to come. I like you already, Oswald. You seem like a good lad. So what are we going to do with Oswald? Uh, oh, you can talk. Great. Uh... <laughs> I have to be uncomfortably close to Oswald, and he's only got one working eye, it looks like. But, uh, yeah, fair play. I mean, he's he's got a keen eye for smithing, and that's what we want. Right. Crafting first gear. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit of tutorial stuff, I guess. Weak and puny. Yep, I mean, compared to you, Oswald, I am a little bit on the puny side. First thing you need is a weapon. Crafting a scrappy sword or a spiked club will serve us well. Okay. So we might be able to get the stuff for that. Ember Veil can be saved where there's ash, there's embers. The shroud suffocates the valley, so seek the elixir well with your new gear and raise the root of our misery. Okay, so maybe drinking that elixir was a good thing because I just absorbed it and it's no longer going to be, you know, troubling the world or something. <laughs> Rest up and eat well before you head out. A fire a roof over your head and some meat in your belly will prepare you for anything. All right, and now he can craft some stuff that we can't craft at our crafting table. So we can enhance our equipment. We can do some manual crafting. And each perk costs runes. Okay, so we don't have any runes yet. But he can make us some nails. Interesting. He can craft us lockpicks, which we already know how to make ourselves. And it doesn't seem like he can do that any cheaper than us manually crafting them. Yeah. Oh, no, he can. He does it for cheaper. He does them for one, where manually crafting them takes two metal scraps. That's, that's cool. That is worth knowing. And there's some decorative items here as well. Oh, how nice. He can make us little scrappy jugs and things. Oh, and a pickaxe. Yes. Now you're talking. But for that, we need wood from the shroud. 
Is chopping down this big mushroom going to get us anything? Is that what counts as a tree in this blasted landscape? I suppose we find out by... Taking the axe to it, right? Timber! And... Nothing. <laughs> Didn't see anything we could loot from that. Never mind. Back in, and we still have the elixir craze, but I am wondering if... We can chop down a little bit of this tree here and loot that. Yeah, shroud wood. Okay, great. Now we know how to get hold of that. And now we get some apparently liquidy mushrooms. That sounds gross. Not sure I want that. Not sure I want to chop this down either because it's providing light right now. Although there is a red beacon in here which is tempting me forward. The siren's call of the red beacon. This is maybe going to give us a little bit of lore perhaps or... Restore our time in here. Oh, interesting. So if you're raiding one of these structures or these areas, you can go deeper if you're able to find those hourglasses. Well, I guess I can just fast travel back home from here, right? So let's do that. And now I have some shroud wood. I should be able to make a pickaxe. And I think <laughs> I think that's where we're going to leave it for the episode. But now that we've got uh, our lovely blacksmith here, did you forget about your weaponry? I mean, I didn't, but I had other priorities. We need a bit of string for that, but the pickaxes, one of those we can make. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mr. Anders. Absolutely it is, and now we have a pickaxe, which is not quite a hammer, but it's close enough. <laughs> I think the hotbar management in this leaves something to be desired, but that's really just me. So now we can go mining, and we can mine out the dirt at our feet, it seems like, but we can also mine some stone. Yeah, that's the stuff. We're going to go Animal Crossing on this. We're going to grab some stone off the floor. <laughs> nice! And that breaks down into all kinds of stones, which I presume we can turn into some stone house blocks a little bit later. Maybe the blacksmith can help us with those as well. And naturally, it was only at this point that I recognized the thing that I had been missing this entire time, which was the construction hammer, which of course says, a building tool capable of quickly erecting various structures around your home. Honestly, some of this stuff, like, you could beat me over the head with it and I still wouldn't notice it. So, <laughs> what we now have is a bunch of crafting recipes that have unlocked. And if we take a look in the backpack here, I can drag that into my hotbar and we can use tab to enter building mode. At which point, a ton of stuff becomes available to you. Now, there are individual blocks like this which you can seemingly build just out of the rough wood blocks that I crafted earlier. So it's a good thing we made those, right? So these will snap to a grid seemingly regardless of whether or not use snapping is enabled. And you can also hold down Q to shift them forwards or backwards so that they have a certain range you can build away from them. You can also rotate them 90 degrees, which doesn't make any sense for these blocks, but will make sense for larger walls. So we can make window frames, we can add door frames in here, we can make columns and walls and stairs. There's a lot of stuff that we can make out of this very, very simply just now that we have these rough wood blocks available. Let's finish up and see if we can make some stone blocks at our crafting table real fast though, because I have a feeling having a bit of stone in here is going to be kind of fun. We can also make shroud wood blocks and tarred wood blocks. So there's a bit of variety in here in terms of texture already. Let's make some stone blocks though to see what we can do with those. And I'm going to scroll down in the build mode if I can. Okay, we can have different shapes by changing category here, holding down alt and just adjusting some of this. And it seems like they have preset sizes so that you can very easily come up with some structures that will fit with each other and not deal with any kind of issues, which is a problem I've had in the past with different building games. So it's really nice that we have the option to do that here. So let's go with a modestly sized house, I think, for now. Let's start with a couple of stone walls and we can simply build those here and they position themselves in the world. It's a little bit finicky just to get the shape right here, but that should be fine. And there we go, we're building. We can rotate the walls by 90 degrees and make sure that they're all roughly at the same height, like so. And then we'd need to gather more stone if we wanted to make a little bit more. But I like the fact that we can add in a door frame that's going to just attach to the side of a block right there. And we can do that once we have enough materials. Or we can potentially make the door frame out of wood instead. You know, you can put that over the top there. And then presumably we can set up doors on the inside here if we have... I guess there's terrain and stuff. Maybe we need to look in the crafting setup for the shapes for doors 
specifically, because they don't seem to appear right here. Yeah, there we go. Decorative stuff in here has wooden double doors, so we need two wooden doors for that. We have a crude wooden door here that requires some string. Okay, so we need to craft a bit of string using plant fiber again, and I expect I can get that from some of the bushes and whatnot around here instead of having to go and salvage it from the nearby towns. We'll grab a little bit more stone on the way, but I will need to craft some storage at some point soon because my inventory is fast becoming a little full. And now I'm a little bit worried that putting this guy here was kind of a pain because he's always just yelling at me about weapons every time I want to come back to my crafting table and build something. If I want to replace one of these walls with a window frame, I can simply right click and then left click to get the window put in there. I think that's quite neat, actually. Although I kind of want to be able to tuck and roll through my own windows when they don't have any windows in there. Apparently I can't do that. Let's finish building. Let's make myself a little bit of string if I can do that in here can do that in the manual crafting. We don't even have to leave the workbench. There we go. That'll get us a door nice and easily. And with the inventory, we can place the door in position here. Got to rotate that by 90 degrees so it's going to fit in the door frame that I've left. And of course, I've placed it wrong. But we can hold E to pick that up nice and easy. Trash it and put it back in place right there. So we're going to have to modify the walls slightly in order to fit. And maybe that's where some of these individual stone blocks are going to come into play. Yeah, there we go. I can actually do a little bit of manual building with those stone blocks and that, since it snaps to the grid, fits perfectly. So the door is slightly inset on the wall. I actually really like that. That's kind of neat. And we could do that to modify the outside of the house as well. Obviously, if we wanted to create like a little chimney breast or something here, we could do that quite easily just with some rough stone blocks. So you can work from these prefab pieces, but it's really easy to kind of augment the sides of them with little blocks of wood here and there. We can also even remove small sections and replace those with wood if we want the house to have kind of like a patchworky feel. That's really sweet, actually. And I wonder if maybe if I put a couple of blocks around the outside of this, I can jump on those. And yeah, we can jump up to the top of our house that way. That's kind of nice. Let's go back to our building hammer and see what the options are for prefab roofs, though, because we want the two meter roof. We probably want that to be made out of roof blocks which we have to make at the crafting workbench. Okay, that's fair. But it seems like my options there are either plant fibers or tarred shingles, and I don't have enough tar for that, so I'll need to go and gather a few more plant fibers, but that should be simple enough from what I just have around this area. And back at the crafting interface, we have enough to make a decent handful of plant fiber roof blocks. So let's go back into building mode and see what we can do with those. Now you're talking. And it seems like we can have them slightly offset from the wall here as well. We actually have a fine enough measure of control that I can put them in a little bit jankily like this. Oh, and I just removed the wall of my house. Okay, so maybe some of this building is going to take me a second or two to get used to. Okay, okay, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It seems to be working out quite well so far. Let's rotate this one once again, and I can probably just snap some more roof segments onto this one, yeah? And this is probably going to be the most edited part of the video because I was slightly on the struggle bus with building there. But we've got a recessed panel in the ceiling, in the roof, which is actually quite nice. I kind of like that as a stylistic touch. Now let's see if I can recreate it on the other side. <laughs> All right, a little bit more plant fiber collected and now we're really cooking with gas. And the best part is I can finish building mode. I can go into the individual plant fiber blocks and we can just add in a little roof ridge here if we want to. And we can kind of stitch the panels of the roof together so that they form a point at the front. And that's actually really smart. Very good, very, very good. Now let's see if we can fix up the sections of the roof here that need a bit more stone wall in there. Or maybe we can even put a, a window up high here at the top. Yeah, let's do that. Because we can put in these sections of wall. We can just line those up with the wall we already have. And it looks a little bit rough for the moment, obviously. The shape is not great, but bear with me. Because if I'm understanding this correctly, what we can do is build basically in whatever pattern we want. And then we go in with the individual stone blocks and we just take out the ones that we don't need. And if we want to, we could even add individual blocks to the thatch roof line here to make it a little more even with the stone wall of the front of the house. And I think that's pretty smart. I think that as a building system works pretty well. You can even use it to add lots of little eccentricities to the front of the house if you want to. You can have some broken down bits and bits that look a little bit rough. The kind of stuff that adds a little rustic charm to your abode. And I'm sure in here we could put all kinds of furniture and lighting and whatnot, but for now, I'm gonna have to light this up just by holding a torch in here. Well, folks, that's where we're going to leave this look at Enshrouded. And who knows if I'll return to this game, whether on streams or in videos. I expect the videos will just 
worst state of Minecraft on this channel, but for the moment at least it's been really fun to explore this and see what other games have to offer. I'm fairly certain my building skills in Minecraft are a little better than this, but who knows where we could take a game like this. So thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixel Riffs and his name has been Oswald Anders, apparently. <laughs> Folks, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.